Hey guys, Tim here and welcome to another episode of Red Wolf TV. You might be asking yourself, what's the special occasion? Well, I'll tell you, it's because today is going to be a good day. Not just a good day, it's going to be an amazing day. Not just because it's nearly Christmas, though it does feel that Christmas has come early this year. It is because I have a hot date. Not really with whom, but with what. And it's that. My God, I'm so excited. There is absolutely no point in me asking you what it could possibly be because you're not an idiot and you could read the title. But this is how it arrives, in a black box. And let's just face it, unboxing is half the fun. Now, if I were to open this like my usual birthday or Christmas present, it would be torn to shreds. But I'm going to open this like the Queen would. Licensed by Nighthawk Custom. Oh god, I'm so excited. Right, okay, moving on. There you go. Just look at us. Inspiring imagination, standing erect and proud with the Nighthawk Custom GRP, Global Response Pistol Steel version. Yes, steel. And as you open it, you get this sudden waft of this recently out of a factory smell. I swear, if only you could smell it right now. I almost don't want to touch it, but I have to because it's my job. So let's get it out of there. Wow, that's stiff inside its foam padding. Like Excalibur. Get it? Excalibur? Wow. This thing is heavy. This solid chunk of steel, quite literally all steel, weighs at around 1.2 kilos. So it's basically the heaviest airsoft pistol known to man that I can think of. As I've mentioned before, it is fully licensed by Nighthawk Custom, so you can expect all the correct markings and engravings on the left and right side of a slide, the breech and the grip panel. And it makes you want to hold it in close and be wary of your surroundings, thinking, are they going to steal my pistol? Are they going to steal it? Don't you freaking dare. I can imagine why, because not only does it look good, it sounds amazing. In fact, let's compare it with something. Also, a metal gas blowback. Here, pulling back the slide, Sounds all right. Pulling back the slide. Releasing the slide. All right. Releasing the slide. Just sounds so much better. Hammer. Used to be satisfying. Not until you hear this. Just. And since the slide is so heavy, it needs to be a CO2 GBB. And I'm not sure if this is a design flaw, but I think it is a beautiful mistake because the last thing you want is to release the mag by accident and have it break by hitting the floor because those mags are expensive. So like I said, a beautiful mistake. Inside is an 11 pound recoil spring, just so it could stay snappy even though the slide is made out of steel. A lot of people point their pistols down just to showcase how snappy they are. But this, even going against gravity, it's still incredibly snappy. Also, notice how much pressure I have to put on the mag release. That is a strong spring inside, just like a real gun. Even the hammer is incredibly stiff. It has a tri-dot affair and the front sight sits flushed along the slide. I also like how the bottom of a slide bodes well with the beaver tail. It looks very tidy. There are serrations along the slide so you can cock it back any method you feel comfortable with. The all round grip and grip panel is very tight and has been cut with precision, meaning that it's sharp so one could possibly cut themselves if you're not careful or using gloves, which often happens with real steel pistols. So what we have here is a gas blowback that redefines realism. This is the result of a year's worth of design and testing to create the most realistic GBB pistol ever, without taking into account shell ejection, of course. But we've also had input from airsoft surgeon, real steel operators, and former military personnel, which kind of puts into perspective how much effort was put into producing this steel Nighthawk Custom GRP. But enough talking, let's chrono the thing. The magazine has a capacity of 26 BBs. For the chrono test, we're using 0.2 gram BBs CO2 gas. Let's see that 11 pound recoil spring in action. Okay, let's get back to it.
To be honest, I don't know why I'm sitting down. I feel as if I need to let my mind recuperate after it had just exploded. But I thought I may as well mention a few things. First of all, the original design was based on the Tokyo Marui system, but we manufactured everything from scratch and it was modified to deal with the heavy steel weight as well as being compatible with CO2 gas, which also kind of means you can use Tokyo Marui 1911 magazines, but you don't want to use it because green gas and red gas makes this sound pathetic. And you don't want to be holding a cat coughing up a hairball. You want to be holding a lion about to shoot bullets at its prey. So let's take this to a range, and I know exactly where to go. There was only one place I could really think of, and this is M4 Workshop and Training Center. We're at the 30 meter range, and I'm gonna try to pling that white target at the far back using the Nighthawk Custom. This time we'll be using 0.3 gram BBs, so let's see how this works out. Remember guys, always wear eye protection. You can only do that with a heavy metal slide. Wow. Okay, to be honest, that was my first shot on camera. Obviously, when I was off camera, I meddled with the hop-up just to make sure it was fine-tuned. And uh, speaking of which, we may as well talk about the hop-up, how to get to it, and how to put it back together, which is a little iffy. Let me show you what I mean. The removal of the slide is pretty standard. First, eject the magazine, pull it back to the appropriate gap, and push the pin out from the other side. Most 1911s have a flatter pin, but in this case it's rounded, but it still doesn't want to be pushed out. Here's a top tip. Insert finger in breech and push it out. And then remove the slide and here is the hop-up. Secondly, I think this pin sticks out too much. I'll let you see what I mean. You put the slide back on, put the pin back in, but then you can't really insert it because it gets in the way. So, you'll need to get a screwdriver, pull it down, and insert it like so. This isn't really a big issue. In fact, it's tiny, but it still slows down the whole process. Anyway, let's have a look at the size of that target. So the target is a little bit smaller than the size of my hand, but from 30 meters away, that's still a headshot. Now, for some target practice. Lane three is my lane. I'm going to be hitting the target from about 10 meters away, which is our standard pistol indoor CQB environment. Let's do this. I have to stop there, that recoil is Right, let's have a look at that. Wow, okay. Um, I kind of shot it out of position. Here we go. So if you look at it closely, the distance between the two furthest shots is at about two and a half to three inches, but I'll let you know when we get to the office. So here's the result. The two shots that are furthest away from each other are about three inches apart. And you can easily pick off a target from about 30 meters away, even in a CQB scenario, because it is CQB safe. So it's accurate. It's a CO2 pistol you could use in CQB. It sounds beautiful and it is beautifully weighted, which is heavy. Can it get any heavier? Guess what? Yes, it can. If you add a X300V Surefire flashlight, doesn't it look like a beast? Do you know how many times it took to get the correct measurements for the accessory rail? Way too many times. We wanted to make sure that the Surefire flashlight in particular fit absolutely perfectly with no wobble. Hardly anything wobbles. Sure, the slide may rattle a little bit, but there is hardly any play. Same with the outer barrel. We wanted to make sure that everything fit perfectly. Fortunately enough, you'll be able to see the RWA Nighthawk Custom GRP on our website very soon at www.redwolfairsoft.com. So see you guys on the next episode of Redwolf TV. Pornstash out.
I'd like to thank M4 Workshop and Training Center for allowing us to use their amazing range. If you'd like to know more about them, click on the link in the description below.